The States panel allows you to quickly switch between different variations of a project or compare design choices by capturing the current visibility states of your layers across your document. You can also use queries based on various criteria to toggle layer visibility and make selections across multiple layers or artboards simultaneously. Here I have a floor plan for a hostel. I might want to tidy it up for a client by removing the text and measurement lines. I could do this by using Select Object or Select Same. However, it would become tedious if the client wanted to check a measurement or room name quickly. Instead, we can create a query. I'll open the States panel by going to the Window menu and selecting States. I'll just float the panel onto the workspace so I can still view the Layers panel. On the States panel, I can either add a new query or add a new captured state. I'll add a new query. First, I want to remove the text, so I'll call this query text. Now I'll click to expand the options and filter by layer type and choose both artistic text and frame text. Then I'll collapse the query to keep the panel neat. Now with a single click, I can hide all text layers on the document and easily show them again when I need them to be visible. When the text is hidden, these measurement lines lose context, so I'll create a new query to hide or show these two. I'll name this one Measurement Lines. And this time I'll scroll down and set the criteria to layer name. Throughout this CAD document, all the measurement lines have the same layer name, Rotator Dimension. So this time I'll use the layer name to hide or show them together. The filtering is case sensitive so I need to use all capitals here in line with the layer naming convention for this plan. Now I can hide the measurement lines too to clean up the appearance of the floor plan. If I need to check the measurements, I can quickly show both text and dimension lines and then hide them again. As well as hiding or showing layers based on specific criteria, you can capture your document in different states to switch between multiple versions of the same work. Here I have a marketing campaign for a shoe company. The campaign will be launched internationally, so the text has been translated from English into French, German and Japanese. When the text layers were created, each one was labelled with a code to identify which language it contained. EN for English, FR for French and so on. I can use this code as criteria to create a query. First, I'll check the scope setting. The scope determines whether the query will include layers from a specific artboard a selection from the Layers panel or the whole document. In this case, I want the query to include layers across the whole document. I'll add a new query and name it EN. Then I'll open the options and set the criteria to layer name. This time, I want to include every layer that contains English text, indicated by the EN code. If I just type EN into the field, the query will include any layer names with capital EN in it, including other languages that happen to be in capitals and contain E and N together. To limit the criteria to the EN code only, we can use regular expressions. Affinity supports the use of regular expressions to find content that matches specific patterns. Writing regular expressions involves special syntax to specify what you'd like to find in text. For this example, I'd like to find all layers that specifically end with EN, so I'll type EN dollar sign. This will search through the layer stack and include any layers that have EN at the end of the layer name. Now I can repeat this step to create queries for the other three languages by inputting the two letter code followed by the dollar sign. For most layer based workflows in Affinity Designer, it's likely that you won't need anything more advanced than basic regular expression tokens. But you can look up examples online if you have specific requirements for more advanced expressions. Now I can toggle the visibility of each language across all the artboards to create different versions of the campaign. I do, however, have to remember to turn off the visibility of one language in order to clearly see the next. To make viewing and switching easier, I can capture the current states and then I can look through the languages with one click. I'll make sure the English version is visible, then I'll select Add New Captured State. I'll name it English. Now I'll make a captured state for the Japanese translations. 
I'll hide the English text and show the Japanese text. Again, I'll select Add New Captured State and name this one Japanese. Now I can click to apply each captured state to the workspace to switch between the different languages. The States panel also enables you to make quick selections of all layers that meet the query criteria. This is incredibly useful if you want to make changes to multiple layers that can't be grouped together. For example, when the layers are across multiple artboards, or the layers hierarchy means that other layers need to stay in between the ones that you want to select. In this illustration, I want to focus on the mushrooms. The tops are curves with details and shadow layers clipped inside. I can't group them together because the layers for the steps need to stay in between so that the left mushrooms appear to be behind the steps. I can't use Select Same Fill Colour because I don't want to include the other parts of the design and I can't use Select Same Name because I've also named them by their relative size. I'll add a new query and call it Mushrooms. Then I'll expand the options and set the criteria to layer name and enable regular expressions. I'll set the layer name to Mushroom and end with the dollar sign. So now the query will affect all the layers that end with the word Mushroom, regardless of the size description. Now I can collapse this query and use the Select button to quickly select all the Mushroom top curves. This means that I can change the colours on the colour panel or go to the context toolbar and use transform objects separately to scale them in place. So that was a look at some of the uses for layer states in Affinity Designer and a few examples of how creating queries and captured states can speed up your workflow. Thanks for watching.